I had a professor in college who told me music is sound over time. He went on to say that it's actually the only art where doing something a hair of a second off can ruin its full effect. Now, this is true, and I didn't understand the full implications of this as a student, but the more I have studied music, the more I have realized it truly is just sound being manipulated across a timeline. Now, you might be asking yourself, what does this have to do with synthesis and envelopes? And today, we are going to explore exactly that. Brett Pontecorvo here at LiveKeyboardist.com, and today we are in the middle of a five-week series on sound design. Now, if you haven't already done it, make sure that you grab a copy of the Quick Synth Map, because I'm going to be referencing that throughout this series, and also it's just a pretty handy guide to have. Click that like button, click the subscribe button, and let's jump in to envelopes. So why do I consider the envelope the most important part of a synthesizer? Well, that is because it is the time control. And if you have a look at the quick synth map, you will see that envelopes just control any parameter over time. Now, this is done using four parameters, attack, decay, sustain, and release. And using just these things, we can actually create pretty amazing results. So attack is the time it takes to go from zero to full expression, and decay is the amount of time that it takes to arrive at the sustain level. The sustain level is the level of sustain that you set, and release is the amount of time it takes to return to its starting point. So we're going to have a look now at amplitude envelopes, which of course controls volume over time. But next week we're going to dive into how we can use envelopes on other parameters in the synth. So make sure you're subscribed so you know when that comes out. Now let's go ahead and have a look at this in action so we can really see and experience exactly what that does. So we're just going to start with a default version of Wavetable. Now this will work on any synth, so whatever you're using, you can totally make use of this. Uh, now when I open this up, to start with, you will hear that I just have this sine wave. Now, Wavetable's amplitude envelope is over here. Now just as we talked about, we've got attack, decay, sustain, and release. So as I increase the attack time, you'll hear it takes a longer amount of time to reach full volume. As I decrease, it becomes more immediate. The decay time tells how long it takes to get to the sustain level. So I'm going to set this at zero so you can hear it. It'll take about three seconds to go from full volume to nothing. And the release time, if I were to release my key, it will take 14 seconds to release. That's too long. Try four seconds. So we're going to start by building a flute sound, and a flute sound is pretty simple. It's got a, a pretty long attack, maybe about 600 milliseconds. It's got, it doesn't really decrease in volume. And then for the release, we'll set that at about 550. Now we could make a more convincing flute, but just this amplitude envelope gets us pretty close. Now let's create a bell sound. So a bell is going to have a decay that comes down to zero. So already that's not terrible. Now our attack should be pretty immediate. And maybe a long release here. And if I just bring this attack time up a little bit, it's going to be a little bit... A little bit of a more muted sound, and with a shorter release... We've got kind of like a marimba sounding thing here. And by the way, if I move this to the lower end... I've got a decently convincing bass. So amplitude envelopes are pretty important because they give us the overall shape of the sound. Now obviously, none of these sounds were the most mature full sounds, but they got us decently close. So beginning to think in terms of 
volume over time can be really important. Now, if you are ready to dive into something that's a little bit more comprehensive, I've got a link on the screen right now for my Intro to Sound Design course. It's geared towards keyboard players, um, and it's just a few dollars, so head over to that link and check it out. And if not, I've got some links on the screen right now to some other sound design videos that I've done, as well as to the other videos in this series. So go ahead and click on what is most relevant to you, and I will see you next week.